Welcome to the Astro Psyche. I hope you're doing well. This is your weekly astrology forecast for January 22nd through the 28th. This week we have a full moon in Leo, so a culmination around themes that involve uh, giving and receiving love, generosity, and creative self-expression, all Leo themes. And then some other transits that are involving Venus and Mercury and our ability to also give and receive and communicate. So we're going to talk about all of those. My name is Shauna McGrath. I'm a psychotherapist and astrologer and um, yeah, looking forward to sharing these astrology transits with you so that you can really make the most out of this week. Okay, so let's start with the full moon in Leo. This full moon in Leo is happening on Thursday, January 25th. It's exact at 9.53 a.m. Pacific time at five degrees of Leo. So fairly early in the sign of Leo. And uh, so full moons are, are typically this, um, the moon is connected to our emotional experience. Um, also our intuition, also our subconscious kind of emotional experience. So it's the emotions that we're aware of, but also kind of just the the emotional tone, whether or not we are aware of how or why that may be. It's kind of like our subjective experience from day to day, month to month, etc. And so like our subjective experience and our mood and emotions and thoughts, there's a lot of fluctuation and um, the moon reflects this through its very quick pace through the zodiac um, and its phases of waxing and waning, etc. So uh, the full moon is important because it is a major point within the lunar cycle, the monthly lunar cycle that represents a culmination around what we have started um, since the new moon about two weeks ago, um, possibly since the new moon in Leo that happened around summertime, and possibly also just kind of like a culmination around our psychological or emotional process. There's a feeling of um, things coming up where we're feeling more, we're experiencing more. It's kind of like the volume is turned up on everything, the, the inner experience and the outer experience as well. So it can kind of also just feel like a time where there's there's just more busyness, there's more externalness. And uh, this can be experienced as sometimes overwhelming, sometimes it can feel very gratifying, it kind of depends on what's going on. Um, and when so so it's like this feeling of like momentum moving towards so because this full moon is happening on thursday there might be this feeling of kind of like um ramping up or um preparing for leading up to that day and then sort of like a uh, an exhale or a release or softening uh afterwards friday saturday sunday um and a full moon in the sign of Leo in particular means that there is a culmination or a fullness or a celebration even around themes that involve Leo. And so Leo is a fire sign. It's also a fixed sign. Fixed signs are about establishing things. It's about um, continuing to develop and elaborate on a thing. And fire is about passion, enthusiasm, intuition, and like um, the that that like spark, that excitement, and um, even leadership and things like this are connected with fire. Fire has uh, a sense of fire is so interesting because it requires fuel. It requires something to to keep it going, and then it also has this quality of transition or transmutation where um, with fire there is a burning effect. So there's kind of, um, I'm thinking about in, uh, in uh, some yoga philosophies, uh, there's this term called tapas, which means, um, it essentially means to burn 
and that that burning has a purifying um, sort of effect. And so I'm thinking about fire as having this effect where fire burns, but it also can be correlated, depending on the tradition, with a sense of um, of refining something. And so with Leo, there is a sense of refining something in a way that it's um, refining again and again and again, and like constantly going back into something. Um, I'll also say that uh, at a psychological level, my experience of Leo, what, what I see in, um, in my client work um, and just giving readings is that Leo is really about love and generosity and, and also creative expression. But there's, there's this thing with Leo around um, a core purpose or a core desire with Leo is to be able to give and receive love and affection and adoration. There's kind of this, um, and not like in a way where it's necessarily, um, I, like I'm not talking about flattery, I'm talking about when you have, um, and when we have these experiences of like there's an upwelling of love or adoration or affection, um, and this could be towards a person, a thing, or even an animal, um, but it's kind of that quality is very core to the experience of Leo. And then of course the, um, the construed or maybe um, shadow version of this is when there's a need for that, but a person tries to modify themselves in order to get that love and affection and adoration. And then it becomes more of like an empty performance, which, it, uh, which sort of like, um, put it like puts out that fire. It puts out that sense of reciprocity because it's not coming from a place of, of, of authenticity, of genuineness, of, of this like natural organic um, upwelling of, of wanting to be near, of being drawn towards. Um, and then uh, this is also very connected with creative self-expression because uh, creativity and self-expression is, is very spontaneous, to be very spontaneous. Um, and yeah, doing creative things, it's kind of like falling asleep. You can do all of the things that you know will um, will get you to fall asleep. You know, you can go to bed at a certain time, be comfortable, be sleepy, um, you know, not eat a heavy meal, blah, blah, blah. But then there's some kind of magic things where, where you can't just decide, okay, I'm going to do this now. It is the same with creative expression. And so Leo carries this energy. So there's this certain quality of um, spontaneous hope and optimism that is a part of Leo. And uh, so, so um, these are all qualities and experiences, this like giving and receiving love and affection and um, how comfortable or not we feel with, with experiencing that. Uh, creative self-expression, um, things like I think it, the core of Leo is also allowing oneself to feel, allowing oneself to feel um, and to express in a way that is, uh, is authentic and that there is spontaneity and genuineness in that process. So these are all themes that may come up with this full moon. Um, and I would notice how you're feeling, notice what comes up for you. I think that the full moon we can think of as kind of like a, um, hmm, kind of like this process of like, Anything that needs to or wants to come up in you psychologically to be seen, to be acknowledged, to be known, that it sort of, it, it comes up during the full moon and then things sort of um, simmer down and then there's more of an inward reflective kind of energy when we get to the new moon and then uh, when there's a full moon again, it's kind of like there's this, uh, this new awareness. Um, 
in astrology, light is connected with conscious awareness, whereas uh, lack of light is connected with um, the unconscious. And so the full moon is this bright light in the sky and allows us to see things that maybe we haven't seen before. Okay. Um, the other piece of this full moon in particular is that it happens to be fairly closely opposite Pluto in Aquarius. And um, if you watched last week and you've been following this, you know that Pluto has just moved into Aquarius this past week. It's going to be here for um, several months, uh, like more than several months, I guess. It's going to go, it's going to stay in Aquarius through about November this year, go back into Capricorn and then go forward. Anyways, um, what, what you need to know for this week is that the moon opposite Pluto emphasizes themes around becoming aware of something that we were maybe not previously aware of, becoming conscious of unconscious material. This is Pluto. Uh, it could also be, you know, becoming more aware of um, something that was maybe hidden or secret. Um, I think it's also a good opportunity for doing any type of healing work as well. Pluto is a symbol of healing. It's a symbol of psychology. It's a symbol of, um, of, uh, of facing the parts of yourself or ideas or thoughts that maybe feel difficult to look at because they're um, because there's something about them that feels um, uncomfortable. <laughs> so, uh, so that you know that may be a factor in here, I think. And I would you know hold it lightly and just notice what you notice. And um, this is something that we can lean more into by. Um, engaging in work that is therapeutic or healing in nature um, through working with, you know, a, a counselor or doing any kind of um, like energetic healing work, uh, but also things that you can do on your own too, as far as journaling, um, journaling, doing like, I'm thinking about like, um, you know, self-hypnosis, recordings and things like this, I think could be helpful this week. Um, and also just letting yourself feel the way that you're feeling and that that's okay. Uh, the other piece of this um, full moon is that it's making a square to Jupiter. And so I like this because Jupiter usually brings in a sense of openness and new opportunities. That it's a square, though, means that there might be kind of like a feeling of too, too muchness. Sometimes Jupiter can feel like, um, like there's too much going on or too many options. And so I would just kind of notice what your capacity is this week. Notice where your limitations are, where you feel like, okay, like that's it. That's I'm at my max. And um, I think Pluto is really asking, what do you need to do to to make, make it so that this is a helpful experience for you. What do you need in these moments? Um, so, so yeah, so I think there's a lot here to really take advantage of. Uh, okay, so that's the full moon. Also this week, we have Venus changing signs and making some aspects. So... Venus is a symbol of relationships, beauty, aesthetics, sensuality, sexuality, attraction, can even be a symbol of money, finances, and self-worth as well, where we place our values. And so Venus has been in Sagittarius for the last month or so. It's changing signs into Capricorn this week. And so this is where Venus in Sagittarius, all things being considered equal, there's this theme of relationships where there's more openness. It's more about looking at the bigger picture. It's more about um, change and transition and uh, yeah, looking at things from another person's perspective. Um, while Venus was in Sagittarius, it was also making a square to Saturn and Neptune. And so there was like a little bit of tension there, I think also. Um, 
now that Venus will be moving into Capricorn this week, this brings in more of a feeling tone of grounded and practicality in relationships, money, finances, um, beauty, aesthetics, all of these things. And on top of this, Venus is making a trine to both Jupiter and Uranus by sign. Um, and I like this because this brings in sort of, it, it feels like grounded, groundedness, but also an openness to, to seeing what works, seeing what feels good. There's um, like Jupiter is openness to new possibilities and growth. And like Jupiter is also about spirituality and um, having experiences that are greater, that are connecting you to things that are greater than just your own individual experience. And then Uranus is about unexpected changes and surprises and innovation and creativity even. Um, while Venus is in Capricorn for the next month or so, it will also be with uh, Mercury and Mars. And so um, there's also this concentration of Capricorn energy with Venus, Mercury, and Mars here. And so this, I think, also brings in more of um, a desire to work out through communication and through being direct. Um, also this week, Mercury will conjunct Mars. So this is happening also in Capricorn. So Mercury, the planet of communication, logical thought process, how we think about things and how we um, verbalize things is coming into contact with Mars, the planet of passion, initiation, uh, like physically doing things and using our, our physical bodies, but also fighting for things and being direct and, um, you know, even our capacity to have argumentation. Um, so I think there's like a lot of potential for um, having conversations, having debates. Um, and I think that there's actually a lot of potential for there being healing in this process. Now, I want us to keep in mind that this is all happening during a full moon week. And so full um, when there's a full moon, emotions tend to be heightened. There can be more of um, like where we're just feeling a little more sensitive than normal because there's um, like the volume is up on the emotional sense. And so I would, I would, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, like when I'm thinking of Mercury, Mars, there's a potential certainly for, um, verbal conflict, but I think that we can also use this to engage in helpful discussions that are direct Mars and where we say what we mean and we mean what we say. This is very Mercury Mars in Capricorn, like being like, this is what it is. And that um, we can tap into the Venus in Capricorn, making a trine to Jupiter by doing so in a way where we're being like, yes, um, practical and realistic and honest, but we're also doing so in a way that is, um, kind, but also like, you know, what is it that you really want to get out of this experience? And it's not about like, this is right and this is wrong, but it's like, okay, how can we have a, um, a, an experience of connection? That's really what I'm thinking about here. Okay. So, um, let's pull some cards. I think that's, that's what I think about that. So, um, I wonder, you know, as I'm shuffling how this sits with you, what's coming up for you as I talk about these transits. Yeah, and how, how can you make room, I think, too, for um, Venus trying Jupiter in your life? this week, uh, where there's a sense of, um, with Venus train Jupiter, there's a sense of ease and, um, ease, openness, 
connecting with others, those kinds of things. Okay, so I'm going to pull three cards and you can pick a number between one and three. You can hold a situation or question or circumstance in your heart as you relax. Okay, first card is the Page of Swords. Uh, so pages are usually about messages or new information. Uh, the swords are usually about, uh, also about information or communication or the thought process. They're kind of like an air sort of energy. Um, so this to me is new information coming in. Or maybe, um, maybe you've already received some new information and you're like, processing it or digesting it. Maybe you're hoping for some new information, but there is something here around communication. And this figure in this card looks like sort of, un they look sort of questioning to me, like where they're sort of uncertain about something. And so I wonder if there's a sense of uncertainty here with this. Um, The page also has like a youthful sort of energy to it. Um, there's sort of like um, a quality of innocence there. Uh, the second card is the strategy card. So this is this deck. Um, it's called the deck of spells and potions. And there's two extra cards. One is strategy. The other one is chaos. Um, so they're kind of like bonus cards. Uh, so strategy, I'm going to actually read it from the book, but you know, strategy is like, of course, about like being strategic, planning, um, not leaving things to chance, having like multiple plan, plan A, B, C, D, etc. Um, and this figure, they kind of look like they're walking on both a wand and a sword. It's almost like they're... Um, they have one foot on each. They're kind of like tiptoeing back and forth. And I'm very drawn to the infinity symbol over the top of their head. Um, but I want to read you from this guidebook. Okay, so strategy. You have chosen a strategy and stick to it. Your choice is correct. Follow the rules and act according to the plan. Success awaits you. Add a little discipline. Add a little discipline. Okay, interesting. So yeah, do you have a strategy? <laughs> That's what I would be wondering. Do you have a strategy? Are you wanting a strategy? Are you like, Shauna, I don't want to do that. I want to just sort of like be free and spontaneous. You know, what does strategy bring up for you? And then the third card is the seven of wands. And I actually want to read from the book for this as well. Um, but in this card, the figure is really cute. The, the figure is like sitting on this suitcase that's full of brooms and the suitcase is like all full and they're sort of like trying to smash it down and they're looking up at the, the cat, what looks like a cat on top of them. Um, so wands are usually about business or inspiration or passion or things like this. There's usually sort of like this, um, like active quality to wands. Okay, uh, seven of wands. The road ahead requires preparation. Do not give in to others your desires and principles. Believe and protect yourself. This is very interesting. So I wonder what that, you know, how that sits with you, what comes up for you. Um, when I'm looking at all of these together, there's like, there's this new info. There is um, 
new info or something that you're kind of like questioning or thinking about, there's something that is like, uh, it could be a decision, but it kind of feels like you're sitting with a quandary with the situation. And then a big part of working with this is having a strategy and maybe you've already like have a strategy, but you're sort of like questioning it. And if you are questioning your strategy, I wonder why might that be? What are your hopes and fears around this strategy? What are you afraid of happening? What are you afraid of not happening? What do you hope may happen? Um, and then the, the seven of wands is like, it, it feels very connected to the strategy. It's like, there is, um, it's not just like, oh yeah, like I have my strategy like done. <laughs> um, usually, uh, there's often a need to figure out how to practically implement that step by step. And then also how to maintain that. Like I'm thinking about Leo being a fixed sign, like there is maintenance that needs to happen when we have a plan. It's not just the plan, but so in this case, it's kind of like there's something that you're working through and there needs to be a plan, but then also kind of like the, the smaller mini steps that are involved in that. And um, the seven of wands is emphasizing like a sense of protection and like um, making sure that you're, um, not being swayed or influenced to change, um, you know, uh, like unless you want to, of course, but that, that outside influences are not negatively affecting you. I will also say that um, when I first pulled the strategy card, I thought it was the strength card because it started with an S and then the infinity symbol on the top of this figure's head reminds me of the strength card has that symbol there also. So like there's kind of this quality of like um, inner inner volition, like inner um, your self, um, and I'm thinking of Leo here too, like your own sense of self-confidence is also um, your own sense of willpower also feels key to whatever this scenario is. Uh, okay, so that's your astrology and tarot for the week. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, again, my name is Shauna McGrath. I'm a psychotherapist and astrologer, and um, I do offer psychotherapy as well as single astrology sessions. If you're interested in finding out more about that, you can find it on my website, theastropsyche.com. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you so much for those of you who have left a rating or a view wherever you listen to this podcast. Um, that helps it this podcast to become more visible to folks who are searching for astrology podcasts. Um, so thank you so much for doing that. I am wishing you a lovely week, happy full moon, and I'll see you soon. Bye.